This project was inspired by the damaged section at our home center. Any wood there that's marked in purple paint is at least 70% off, but you'll never know this was made from trash lumber. At our table saw, we set our fence to 16 inches, which is the size of the tabletop that we're going to make out of concrete. This white material is called melamine, and it's perfect for making concrete molds because the concrete won't stick to it. However, this stuff is pretty nasty, so make sure to put it on your respirator whenever you're working with it. We lucked out because this scrap piece was just barely within the measurements we made for this project. But we ran it through the table saw to get a perfectly parallel edge and then cross cut it to a perfect square. Now cross cutting a piece of wood like this is definitely not recommended, but you'll see us go extremely slow and be very careful that we don't rotate the piece at all. We want our concrete top to be two inches thick, so we slid our fence over to two and three quarter inches and ripped four strips down that will be the sides of the mold. And while we do that, we want to remind you that we have full plans available at our website at spenceleydesigncode.com, which is linked in the description below. With all the side pieces cut, we marked out our length and then brought out our crosscut sled. And after aligning the pieces to one end, we used a clamp to prevent them from shifting while we show you one of the best camera angles you'll ever see. It really catches all the action and you can see perfectly what we're cutting. Back over to our workbench, we did a quick test fit to make sure all the pieces made it up well before using clamps to hold the pieces firmly together. We then used our countersink bit to pre-drill holes for our screws and then drove screws in to hold the boards together. After all the side pieces were firmly attached with the screws, we vacuumed out all the extra dust and then grabbed some mineral spirits to clean the concrete form. Just pour a little bit on a rag and then wipe up all the sawdust and other grime. After a couple of minutes, the mineral spirits will evaporate and the form will be clean. We can then take some paste wax and liberally cover the entire mold. And we wanted to give credit to Mike Clifford over on the Industrial Maker channel for showing us this awesome technique. Next, we grab some 100% silicone caulk and try to apply a bead around all the edges of the mold. But something was going wrong. Well, if we would have read the instructions, we would have known that you have to break the seal inside the caulk tube. Anyway, we then ran a thin bead of caulk around all the edges of the mold and used a cake fondant tool to push all the excess silicone to the side. This tool will push all the silicone that we want into the corner of the mold, giving it a nice rounded look, and then all the excess, it will create a fine line between it so we can easily peel the extra silicone off later. We continued prepping the rest of the mold, and at the end it should look like this. There should be clean lines from the fondant tool that will allow you to easily peel the excess silicone off once it cures. And after a couple hours, we came back and we could start to peel all the extra silicone off. It's so satisfying though. You gotta do one. It really is one of the best parts about making concrete molds when you get to peel those giant strings of silicone off. And if you haven't already, make sure to follow us over on Instagram at Spensley Design Co. so you can stay up to date with all the projects that we're working on. We post tons of behind the scene videos and pictures that you definitely won't want to miss. And with all the extra silicone removed and the concrete form swept out, we moved over to our old workbench and used our level with some wood scraps to shim the mold to be perfectly level. If you don't do this, the concrete will flow to one of the corners, leaving you with an uneven slab. Make sure to check all the indicators on the level until you are satisfied before moving on. With the form level, we want to mix our concrete. We are using Quickrete 5000 and actually going to reuse this mold to make two different slabs. One will be your standard gray concrete color and the other we're going to add Quickrete pigment to make it a lot darker. Just pour the concrete into a large bucket, add water, and mix. We're using a paddle attachment for a cordless drill but you can definitely mix this together by hand. We never get the water ratio right at first so we have to add a little bit of water until it gets the consistency of thick oatmeal. Then we just poured it into our mold, making sure to spread it into all the corners. We used a flat scrap piece of wood to screed the top to make it flat and push all the excess over the mold. And this might be the most important part of the process here. 
we need to vibrate all of the air bubbles out, so we used a hammer, sander, and some scrap blocks of wood to pound the mold and get all of the air bubbles to come to the surface. You really can't overdo this part. Just keep going until it looks like most of the bubbles have stopped rising to the surface. While the concrete cures, we grabbed some scrap 2x4 pieces that we also got from our home center and brought them to our joiner sled that we made for a table saw. This is definitely optional and you could just take a couple passes on the table saw to remove the rounded edges. However, we always like to do this to make sure our pieces are perfectly flat. With the pieces clamped to our sled, we ran them through the table saw to get that perfectly clean edge. We then set the flat edge against the fence and ripped one and a half by one and a half inch pieces. After that, we set up a stop block on our cross cut sled and cut these pieces to their final length, first squaring off an edge and then pushing the cut end up to our stop block to cut it to final length. With all the pieces cut, we were ready to do the dado joinery. We first marked out where we wanted to cut these joints and then moved over to the table saw. So we're over at the table saw crosscut sled and we want to cut out this dado in one of the pieces of the leg. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take this piece here and we're going to line it up with the blade. So we got that lined up nicely. So we're going to grab a lock here. We're going to set it on that side. Take a clamp and tighten that piece in. So now with all of our other pieces, we bring it up and we'll have that perfect starting point there. Now to get the stop point on this side, you would think you would just take a piece there, grab your mating piece, put it on the other side, and clamp it on. Now, when you slide this piece over, you're thinking, great, it's going to make a perfect line. The problem is it's now on the wrong side of that line. So, this actually needs to be shifted over, but how much? Well, the answer is the thickness of your blade. So, if you could shim this over just a touch, that would be the perfect data. Now, what is the same thickness of your blade? Well, if you have a full curve blade that's one eighth of an inch, you can also use a one eighth inch drill bit. So, what you can do to get this piece out of the way, you can take your mating piece here, set it up, and take this drill bit and put it right in there. Now you can take another clamp, clamp that on, remove this far clamp, remove the drill bit. Now you can take this scrap over here and slide it over. So we've now basically just scooted this piece over one eighth of an inch. Tighten that down. Now we can remove this piece here and we can test to see where we're at. So we know this spot's going to be good here and we slide this over. Now that is a perfect fit too. So now we're just going to go ahead and make our cuts. The last thing that we needed to do was ensure that our blade height was exactly one half of the thickness of our pieces, which would be three quarters of an inch. Now after taking all the time to set up the stop blocks, making these dado cuts is super easy. Just take multiple passes to hog out the insides, and the stop blocks will prevent you from going too far from either side. Most table saw blades are not flat on the top, so after the dado was cut, we slid the piece back and forth over the top of the blade to clean up all the small ridges that are left. The best part about this method of cutting dados is the fit is perfect every single time. This joinery method makes the pieces incredibly strong since there's so much surface area for the glue to adhere to, and it also locks the pieces into a perfect 90 degree angle. Just apply some light clamping pressure and we can set these pieces aside while we work on the table legs. We follow the same process as before to set up the perfect stop blocks to cut the dado in the lower half of each table leg. 
And if you've made it this far in the video, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. It'll help us grow and lets us know that all these projects that we're making, you guys really like. Thanks. With all the dados cut in the lower portion of the legs, we need to make one more at the top. This cut is actually a lot easier to set up too. Just align the blade to your cut line and clamp down a stop lock. Since we're cutting this piece all the way to the end, we don't even need to worry about the thickness of the blade. With all the dados cut, assembly couldn't be easier. We applied a liberal amount of glue to each joint and forced the pieces together. The glue can cause the wood to swell a little bit, so you might need to use a hammer to force the pieces together. The bottom cross member is the hardest part to put on, but the top is super easy since you can flex the pieces apart. We applied glue and then held everything together with some clamps. Just make sure to use a damp towel to clean up any glue squeeze out. While the glue dries, we turned our attention to our concrete form, which has been curing for about two days now. We removed all the screws holding the form together and gently knocked the side pieces off. This is why we intentionally left these pieces longer than they needed to be. It makes it so much easier to pry these pieces off and we don't have to worry about damaging the concrete. And with all the side pieces removed, we can slide the concrete top out of the form. Just be careful because it's still extremely heavy. Now since we have two different color concrete tops, we also wanted to do two different color bases. For one of the bases, we're just gonna keep it natural and use a wipe on poly. And for the other base, we stained it with black India ink, which is actually the ink that is inside fountain pens. Now in order to attach the base, to the concrete tabletop, we're gonna use some of Gorilla Construction Adhesive. This stuff is super easy to apply and it's super strong. All you have to do is lay down a couple zigzag beads all over the table base and then firmly press it onto the concrete table. It'll start grabbing in just a couple seconds, but the full cure will last in about a day. We came back the next day and used some paste wax to seal the concrete from moisture. You could definitely use something like concrete sealer, but this is a lot cheaper. All you have to do is wipe the wax on, let it set for a little bit, and then wipe on another coat and buff it out at the end. And with that, this project was done.